Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to Twitter Talk. Ba -dum, bum, bum. I really need to get my intros back or redo some or something. Hey, Hoodles. Hi. So we are going to talk about, uh, we're kind of winging it today. Um, I'm going to tell you how it went doing prom here. Um, we're going to talk about Game of Thrones because uh, it's back, but not spoilery stuff just in case you're holding off because couple of my girls told me like, oh, I DVR'd it. We're going to wait. Um, so I'm going to try and do it without spoilers. And um, yeah, so let's just roll right along. So uh, first prom, how did it go? Um, I had two lovely ladies to work with, two completely different hair types. Uh, one, much like my husband's, very fine, very silky. Um but I have worked on her hair before a few times. I've done her hair a few times for homecoming. So uh, I knew what I was working with and uh, I had time to practice. And uh, knowing her own hair, uh, she was a smart girl and picked out something that was doable. So this is how hers turned out. Uh, we did get a little, she was wise enough to get one of those tiny little uh, ponytail holders with the curly bits to um, you know, make that bun look a little bigger, which was very helpful. Um, the uh, rhinestones I picked out were a big hit. Uh, it always helps when you know the girls you're working on, <laughs> their taste level. Um, I lucked out on my second lady. Uh, I had never got to touch her hair before. And apparently she is naturally curly, but she flat ironed it beforehand. And she wanted... Um, uh, French braid across the back of her head and then a curly ponytail. And you guys know the only way I know how to do curls is to sleep in them. So when she showed up with flat ironed hair, I was like, oh no, it's ah. like, uh, if I were her, I'd have just left the natural curls because they braid beautifully. But the nice thing was, even though it was flat ironed, um, she's got a texture similar to mine. So no harm, no foul. Um, although, um, the girls ended up having to curl that ponytail because I really don't know my way around heat tools, uh, curling irons. I have no idea. Um, I could do bangs, <laughs> but just like all those curls, they got it under control. It looked good. Uh, hers. Um, and luckily she has a tacky little heart like me. So the more ostentatious um, hair jewels I got worked great for her. Um, even though I think that ended up looking really classy. But uh, it turned out her dress was black and it was encrusted with Aurora Borealis uh, rhinestone. So I picked the exact right hair jewels for her hair. So who knew? Um, I did need to keep some, which was cool. Um, and uh, when we talk about Game of Thrones in a couple of seconds, um, I'm glad I did. All right, so here's the deal. Game of Thrones premiered. Watch it. There is no hair for me to do that I could see. Nothing that has not previously been done or it was all short hair. Cersei, you're killing me. Um, the sand, sand snakes had their same hair, so that was nothing new. Uh, Daenerys's wasn't you know, it's just kind of a carryover. And I didn't get a good look at Melisandre's because we only ever saw her from the front and never from the back. Well, at least not her hair. So, um, which, you know, the lighting on the show is so dark sometimes it doesn't matter. So there are no new hairstyles, no new hairstyles, which really bummed me out because I was like one person. I was truly counting on Melisandre's hair. Um, cause I was certain we would start this season up at the wall where she fled to last season. So, okay. And then we didn't get to see it. So, um, luckily I am catching up on one of the podcasts I watch. Uh, I have told you about it before, uh, again with this Beverly Hills 90210 over at previously.tv. Um, I was a few episodes behind. So I just kind of saved them up for when I knew I would be busy doing housework and stuff. And um, they recently just did the 1993 prom where Donna gets really drunk. Uh, but Kelly had really, really pretty hair for that episode. So I 
fiddled with it a little bit today just to see if I could do something similar. Um, and we came up with this. And I had leftover sparkles, so we got to make it extra pretty. Um, let me know what you think. There's this side. The sides are different. Um, this is where the curls kind of are. And then this is the back. And this is the other side. Hmm. I will probably do something different with the front, I imagine. I'm not sure. But what do you guys think? Like maybe I'll just leave my bangs out like hers were. Do we want this? Because if we want this, I'll do this on Wednesday. I don't know if we want this, though. Um, I think it's really pretty. Um, I think it turned out nice. I think it looks fancy. Maybe I can fiddle with it a little more, but let me know if we want this um, hairdo on Wednesday, because otherwise I got nothing. Okay, uh, yeah. So let's talk about Game of Thrones in a non-spoilery way. I think this is definitely going to be the year of the woman. Um, we got to check in with all of our ladies for the most part, which was nice. Um, I find the first episodes of shows like this, shows that have a lot of characters, are really difficult um, because you need to establish like your storyline for the entire season. You kind of got to get it started in that first episode, definitely the first two. Um, but the first one always seems to be the hardest because you kind of want to touch base with everybody, but there never seems to be enough time to really like get any plot points going or get anything kind of moving uh, forward. It's always just like, oh yeah, I remember all these people and then it's over. Um, and it did kind of feel like that. Uh, like at the end of the episode, I'm like, it's just getting started. <laughs> which if you think of it as like the introduction to the new season, that's great. But Game of Thrones is always like, is always like this. Each episode, I feel like we're finally starting to get somewhere and the episode ends. And then the next episode starts and it just never seems to pick up where we left off. It's like, just, I don't know. Um, one of the frustrating things about a show I love so much, but I realize it's very difficult when you have such a large cast of characters. And it's not, um, it's not like The Walking Dead where, yes, there are a lot of people, but they're usually either all in one place or all in two places. But they're at least in the general vicinity of one another. Whereas Game of Thrones, they're in different continents, some of them. Um, so it's a little more difficult because it's not just kind of checking in on this particular character. It is also checking in on, like, the country or the continent they're at or the city they're in or whatever is going on in their surroundings. Like all of that also has to come into play, which is why it sometimes feels a little disjointed. So all that said, I actually think this was a really, really good season opener. Um, definitely the best season opener in the past few years. Um, I felt that it was really solid. Um, I felt like we actually had forward momentum in some of the, uh, various plots that are happening. Um, I feel like, you know, we, a reintroduction because, you know, it's so long in between um, seasons that like we hop back in and we're raring to go and it feels like it's going. So that was actually kind of refreshing. I felt like it was pretty tight too. Um, sometimes the show gets a little meandering in places that I'm like, why, why are we staying here? I don't see the point in this. And um, this wasn't. This felt pretty concise, and there we go. Um, and it didn't feel choppy. Sometimes it tends to go a little choppy on us, but it felt good. It felt good. And I was so tickled to see Brienne. Uh, I miss her the most, I think, of everybody on the show. When the season's off, I miss her and I miss Cersei. They are my two favorite characters to watch on the show, along with Sansa. But you guys know I've, I've had a soft, soft spot for Sansa since the very beginning. When nobody likes her, I still love Sansa. <laughs> and uh, since we really have no idea um, what's happening, like I don't know what's happening anymore either, guys, because there are no more books at the moment. I'm really hoping that next one comes out soon. But um, we're caught up and 
for the most part, I do believe I read an article where the showrunners are like, yeah, we're not really going to, we're just kind of going to do our own thing now. Um, you know, we, the books took us so far, uh, we had already started branching off from the books. And, um, I mean, as I've discussed before, uh, there are characters dead on the show that are not dead in the books. So who knows how different that's going to end up being in the books. And, um, like they knew that they knew when they killed off certain people that they were not yet dead in the books, or even if they're going to die in the books or what part they might have to play in the future. So they kind of made up their minds that, all right, the books will go this way and we're going to take the show over here. Um, and I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm a little upset just for the simple fact that I was really depending on the show to tell me how the story ends because I don't think these books will ever be finished <laughs> and we'll never know, which would be frustrating. So I am hoping that uh, the show at least ends up where George expected the books to end up since they do know how it's supposed to end. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we at least get to like some of the basic plot points uh, are the same, but um, yeah, uh, I'm just going to take the show as the show and I don't have to compare it to the books anymore because I don't know what's going on. None of us do. Let's find out. Um, and that's kind of exciting um, because we really have no idea what's going on now. So yay. <laughs> um, it's exciting for all of us, even the book nerds. Um, except I do know a little bit about what Sam will be doing. I don't even know if we'll see Sam this year. I have no idea. We'll see, I guess. All right. Uh, I think that's going to be it for me for today. Um, cause it's already 12 minutes and, you know, I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter. La, la, la. So, um, yeah. Uh, tomorrow we're going to cook. I'm going to try a recipe for tuna noodle, tuna noodle casserole for one. Um, so we're going to try that. Uh, it's made with ramen. <laughs> so any of my college girls should like this one, I guess. Or if you're like me and you like tuna noodle casserole, but your significant other does not, um, you know, maybe you can make it for lunch and see how it is. I don't know. We're going to try. We'll see. We'll see if it's any good. And, um, Wednesday we might have this hair. Maybe. I don't know. Could be. Could be not. Uh, Thursday... I'm going to try and get Delamore at Delamore done, but if not, it'll be a top 10 list. And Friday, once again, as always, will be a toss up of whatever, because I don't know. I never really know what's going on when we go into Friday. It just happens. Okay. Well, that's it for me. I will see you tomorrow. I hope you have a great day. And uh, yeah, tell me your thoughts on Game of Thrones. Oh, and P.S. My comment section, if you're going to be spoilery, that's great. Just I want everybody to realize that there may be spoilers in the comments. It's just the way it goes. Um, I try not to spoil you all too much, but like spoilers don't change my enjoyment of a show. I still love it no matter what, even if I know certain things happen. I still want to watch. I don't know how it happened. Let's look. So any hoodles. All right. Love you guys. Bye.